Hey, today we are going to be making old-fashioned Salisbury steak and not the kind from Swanson's, but good old-fashioned Salisbury steak. Is this one of your classic childhood dishes? Something quick and easy for a dinner party you can make ahead or a great quick uh, after-school dinner for everyone going back to school. So in here I have a pound of turkey and a pound of beef. You can use whatever you have, beef, pork, chicken, turkey, whatever you have, but that's what I have, so that's what I'm gonna use here. I've got six cloves of garlic here. I'm gonna use half of them in here and half of them in our sauce. So about three cloves of garlic in there, chopped nice and fine. In here I have some Italian seasoning and some onion powder going in. And then I have some parsley Oh, about three tablespoons or so of parsley for some color and I'm gonna give that a mix here in here I have uh, well, actually I'm gonna do this first in here is my two eggs some milk Worcestershire mustard Dijon great coupon of course and some ketchup and I just whisk that together real quick so I'm gonna pour that in there so we uh, whoops, whoops. get that in there and then I have a little bit of breadcrumb, half a cup. And I'm now gonna do some seasoned peppers, because that's what I like, this seasoned pepper. And I'm gonna do just a little bit of the Lowry seasoned salt. The Worcestershire shire has a little salt in it too, but I am gonna put a little bit of seasoned salt, just because that's what I prefer. And here we go, we're going in with our hands here. I'm gonna give this a good mix. We don't want to over mix whenever you're making this kind of thing, meatloaf or Salisbury steak or meatballs. You just want to mix it until it's all mixed together. So get this all mixed up. I got to mix my beef and my turkey. So we have a little bit of each in each patty. Oh my gosh, this looks so yummy. Make sure I got everything in here pre-measured so it would go quicker for you guys. So there we go. We have it all nice and mixed and it's a nice moist consistency here. Let me show you what it looks like here. So now I'm gonna form some patties. I'm just gonna get forming here. So take about a handful. What do you think a serving is? Serving about a handful. And I'm gonna make a patty. You can make them round, you can make them oval. I'm going to give it an attempt to make them a little bit oval shaped and see how that'll do. There we go. Let's see how many we get out of here. Was Salisbury steak one of your things that you made? I think I only had probably the Swanson kind, the TV dinners <laughs> of this. But this just looked good and easy and something that the kids would eat too. Or like I said, a make ahead a great dinner party item because everybody loves Salisbury steak, right? Yum. So try and make them even so that they cook even. You could probably also use an ice cream scoop for these if you wanted to, to really make sure you have your quantities the same. Oh my gosh, yum. Okay, I'm gonna get a few of these started in the pan behind me while I am forming. So I'm going to toss one of these and I've got my pan behind me warming up and I have a little bit of olive oil in there and a little bit of butter. So my nice sticky hands here. Make sure my bottom's all coated. Put that in. Yummy. I'm going to get these brown on both sides. Make room here on my plate. Ooh, yummy, whoops. I think these are gonna be delicious. Just cause the consistency of our meat here, nice and wet. This recipe that I used for my inspiration recipe called for a little more liquid, but I didn't put very much breadcrumb. I usually put none. If you wanna make these gluten-free, just put none. I normally don't put filler in these, but I thought, because the Salisbury steak, I wanted them to hold together, hold their shape. So, these are gonna be yummy. So I'm gonna brown them on each side real quick. They don't have to cook all the way through. And then I'll pull them out and we can start our sauce. 
Yum. Mushrooms, fresh mushrooms, fresh garlic, onion. It's going to be so awesome. Okay, another one. Go on it. So out of that, I got five, six, seven. I got seven Salisbury steaks out of that two pounds of meat. Okay, hands clean, ready for cooking. So for my sauce, in the sauce, I've got mushrooms, all chopped. I bought baby bells and regular white sliced mushrooms. Some Dijon, Worcestershire, some beef broth, and onion, and Back there. Oh, fresh rosemary and fresh thyme, all chopped and ready to go in there that I have all prepped. So I have fresh herbs. I didn't have any beef bouillon on hand, so I'm just going to use a little bit of chicken bouillon to give it a little extra rich flavor. But if you have beef on hand, great. I just didn't have any beef on hand. So there we go. Let's see how our Salisbury steaks are doing here. Butter's getting nice and brown. It's gonna make our sauce and our gravy really yummy. Yes, it is. I always like to pick things for a dinner party. If you were gonna pick something like this, you could even make it the day before and then warm it up when your guests get there because anything like this that's in a sauce that sits overnight would be really, really delicious. So don't be afraid to make it ahead. Again, for a quick dinner on a weeknight, you could also make this in the morning when you're getting ready to get out the door and stick it, let it cool off a little bit, stick it in the fridge and boom, you get home at night and dinner is ready to go. Okay, it's got a nice sear on that because I want some nice color on our Salisbury steaks. get a little bit more brown and then we'll start our sauce. Fry these two later. <laughs> I'll get these going in here. I want to get them nice and brown. Did you have Salisbury steak when you were growing up, cameraman? Yes, Swanson. Yes. Swanson, I know. I know, has anyone ever made it from scratch? I know people must have, it's such a classic recipe, but that's why I'm doing it. These, I'm actually gonna serve these with some shredded cabbage. I'm gonna cook it, so cooked cabbage, just for a low carb. You could serve this with mashed potatoes, noodles, rice, whatever you prefer, these would be delicious. Great my secret to cooked cabbage, my mom's secret, shred the cabbage, put it in a pot, a little bit of water, a few tablespoons of water, and then once it gets all nice and steamed, a couple of tablespoons of milk. Put it in there, and oh my gosh, it's just delicious. A little bit of butter, a little bit of salt and pepper, and it is delicious, perfect uh, cooked cabbage. I love cooked cabbage, but that's how I make, make it. That's how my mom made it. Show you one. We're getting a nice golden sear on these. It looks great. So just for the sake of time, I'm gonna pull these out and start our sauce. So these don't need to be cooked all the way through because once we get our sauce made, we're gonna put these back into our sauce and let them simmer. Go check those out. They look delicious, huh? You can also do this mix in the morning and just make the meat, the celery steak mix in the morning and then cook them in the evening just to speed up your, your dinner time routine. So I'm going to start here with some mushrooms and put them in here. The mushrooms and the onion get started browning these. So I'm just putting it right in there with our same oil and the leftover grease from the patties and let those start break, breaking down, throw the onion in there. I have a half of an 
onion, chopped fine, diced fine. More oil in there. I use such lean meat because I use turkey that I don't have a lot of fat from the meat left to saute these. Give those a minute to break down. The mushrooms, as they get hot, you know, they'll release some liquid too, so that's good too. Oh my gosh, does he smell good? It smells great in here. Really yummy. We'll get that going. And we've got the mushrooms, onions. We're going to add the garlic. And then we'll do our roux. Peek and see how these are breaking down. a couple of minutes to saute. I don't want anything in there tasting like raw garlic, do we? Oh, it smells so good in here. You wish we had smell vision. Definitely do. Yum. Okay, I'm going to do a little flour and make our roux. Looking good. Give you a peek. Yeah. I'm going to make a little roux for our sauce, sprinkle a little flour over the top of this. About two, ta two tablespoons or so I have in here. Cook that down. We don't want any flavor of raw flour in our sauce. So give, let that cook a little bit. That sounds delicious. You can see it starts to thicken up. Then we are going to put our beef stock. I've got some beef stock, two cans, about three cups of beef stock. Because we want to have lots of gravy. Oh my gosh, this is going to be delicious. Okay, there we go. Got our beef stock all mixed in there. Fresh herbs, we've got, like I said, rosemary and thyme, fresh. Put that in there. And then we're doing a little bit of Worcestershire shire. We're going to do one tablespoon of Worcestershire. So a little squirt of that. A little bit of Dijon. Squirt of that. a second to thicken up a little. I want to get the beef stock nice and hot if I can before I put our Salisbury steaks back in and let them simmer and finish cooking through. Make sure I got everything in there. So don't forget anything. Nope. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be yummy. Put a little bit of our bouillon in. Just maybe half a teaspoon for extra depth of flavor. Here we go, quick and easy, yummy, classic meal here. Oh gosh, it smells so yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Our patties are starting to release a little bit of their juice too. It's gonna go all back in the pot. I'm gonna take our Salisbury steaks, put them back in our gravy, and let them simmer till the Salisbury steaks are cooked all the way through to 165. Get all our juices back in our pot. Don't want to miss any bits of flavor. So like I said, I'm going to serve this with cooked cabbage and the Salisbury steak on top with the yummy mushroom gravy. But again, you could use rice, mashed potatoes, um, or noodles, whatever you like. So I will finish up our last two off camera here, but you get the idea of a yummy classic dish. You see why it's always been a classic. It's easy, quick, and delicious, and smells great, and easy to make ahead. So thanks for watching today for all your hostess tips, tricks, and ideas for entertaining. Here I am, hostess coach. Thanks for watching.